with today's vulnerability scanners. It's not that they don't find enough vulnerabilities. In fact, they find too much, too many. I don't have a way of prioritize which one to fix, and I cannot fix them all. They are overwhelming. We're going to show a new technology, Curator Vulnerability Manager, also known as QVM. And what makes this component so so special is that it has an asset database, the same that uh, Curator has, but we're going to see how it, it's going to be exploiting it. It, it. it not only is going to get data from scanners, if you have Nessus, Qualys, Rapid7, and many others, it, it will get that data and put it into the asset database along with uh, user information and, and intelligence about where that data came from. Where does it get that intelligence? Well, we can also feed QBM with DNS logs, with DHCP logs, so we get the MAC address, and Active Directory logs, so we get the user information. But we also get something that is special, which is we get the flows, that's the traffic not only logs but traffic and we get both the network flows and flows as well as queue flows which is the content so we know which type of protocol has been used what is being transferred what is being sent when is RC traffic and what is the traffic that goes along we also get into it better application scanning more more uh, fine grain application scanning that come from AppScan Guardium can detect vulnerabilities on databases that no other product can, ex can even know that they exist. And we also get information from uh, our uh, endpoint and other endpoints, uh, products like BigFix. We don't stay there. In order to see whether you are vulnerable to something or not, we sometimes need to look at the configuration information, how your firewalls, for example, are configured. So by looking at the rules, we know what is it that we can or cannot block. We take that information. Uh, Curator also, QBM has also its own scanner. And we'll see how this is very useful to scan ad hoc some components and not having to wait until the next uh, vulnerable uh, scan cycle. And we also get IP reputation, which is very good in knowing, you know, when a particular IP is uh, talking to a bad site, then we know that's a problem. But probably the crown jewel is that it has a network behavior anomaly detection and this will allow you to know if one of those vulnerabilities is actually being exploited. So during the demo that follows we're going to show how we're going to be able to filter. We're going to see a, a ton of vulnerabilities found by the, by the scanners or scanners. doesn't have to be a, a QBM zone but anyone, anyone else. And, and we can filter the vulnerabilities by looking which one has active traffic. And this is key. For example, if we, if we see an FTP vulnerability, but we have not seen FTP traffic going to that particular IP, we should, we should fix it, no doubt about it. But let's see if we have vulnerabilities on things that are active and those have a higher priority. Then we can even filter those down a little bit more and see which can actually be stopped by my IPS and doesn't have to be IBM's uh, very nice uh, IPS technology but it can be McAfee, tipping point, etc. Once we have, you know, we have, okay, these are active, now these we can forget about them because we can tell our IPS to take care of those. Uh, then we can do a little bit more filtering by looking at which of those remaining uh, vulnerabilities are easy to be exploited. For example, which one does not require authentication, which one has a complexity of exploitation which is low, etc. And then from that subset, we're going to use that NBAT capability and see which of them are being exploited. Oh boy, if we got one of these, then those definitely take the, the top priority of them. And then we can actually assign those to say, well, which of these are, uh, for example, Internet Explorer vulnerabilities and pass it to the uh, Internet Explorer guy or to the Adobe guy. 
But we also can do with the, this fantastic technology something that is very nice, which is when I get a new vulnerability announced that we know that these days, you know, they can be an exploit uh, sometimes even the same day, for sure the, the same week. And, and do I have the, the, the capability of running a scan to figure out which of the one I need to patch are and, and fix them? No. Well, this tool has a capability called early warnings that because in the, act, in the asset database, we know which device are, exists and which are vulnerable, etc. You can easily, when you get a new vulnerability announced, that the tool actually collects automatically from CVS, from, from X-Force, and from any other sources, then we know exactly, OK, these are the devices that you need to take care of according to this new vulnerability. And they can, that can save you not only your reputation, but also weeks of work. Because we, on the asset database, by looking at the flows, we detect with new devices or services are, and again, we do this auto-discovery of devices. That's one, one of the things that makes Curator so easy to deploy. And we do this without any scan. In fact, if you want to call this a scan, it's a passive scan. By looking at the flows, we know, oh, we've never seen this particular IP address you know, uh, doing SNMP or, or never seen the IP address at all. Let's go ahead and scan it to see what it has. So we wouldn't have to wait for the next uh, scan. We're also going to show you today how we can actually look, for example, to suspicious devices by that uh, network anomaly behavior detection capability and actually write some rules and say, well, when, you know, this happened, go ahead and scan that device and see what happened. And finally, we will be able to see the, those vulnerabilities in a topology view of my network, which is very nice because visually, if you see that, for example, this vulnerability is too close to the DMZ or too close to a particular database, that's going to trigger a different set of action. Everything we'll show today is completely out of the box. No coding, no customization of the product is required at all for that. We have the vulnerability tab. It's part of a, when you add your license key to your uh, uh, curator, you get this tab, or you can actually buy the, the physical or the virtual appliance for QBM uh, alone. But when you have that capability, this is the type of view that you get. I'm here looking at my vulnerabilities, and uh, we can actually pivot in all these. We can see the vulnerabilities by open services, asset. I'm not going to go in this particular video in details on this in the sake of time. I'm just going to show you what I promised to you on, on the whiteboard. So let's say that we want to see all the vulnerabilities by instance. So if we click on people by instant, here we have, and let me see if I can zoom this here. So you can see that there are 86,000 you know, plus vulnerabilities, uh, instances uh, uh, with, with those vulnerabilities. How can we can start filter them out? Well, let's start by doing a search, and we're going to do a new search. And what we're going to be showing are plenty of good things to actually C is at this category here. Data seen, associated vulnerability traffic seen, and we're going to say that this is going to make it, what, uh, 45 days. And we add that filter, and we execute the search. So these are the ones that we know that there's some, some stuff going on. And look at that. Just by doing that, we got basically 90% reduction. We only have less than two, uh, what is that? Uh, less than 2,000 uh, of those vulnerabilities. Still a lot. I mean, that, that's a lot of work. You want to want to fix it. But let's keep on doing more search. We, we talk about, we're going to edit that search, and we're going to see which are the ones that uh, can actually be stopped by my IP uh, device. And we select this category here. Again, plenty of good things to, to do here. And we have McAfee, IPSs, you know, Symantec, Uniper, uh, our IPS. And but let's say that we do on Tipping Point. Let's say that, that that's the device I have. I want to see how can Tipping Point help me here. So we're going to click in here and do search. And we're going to see how many of those vulnerabilities are actually uh, left. Huh. 122 of these vulnerabilities are, can actually be stopped by my IPS. So what I can actually do is select them all 
so I can go from here all the way to here I actually take the, all of those and go here in action and actually assign it to you know whoever is the IPS guy and explain you know go ahead and do whatever with this and then when he logins into the tool he's going to see these as his vulnerabilities and he knows he needs to work on those so 122 that I can forget about them uh, because of my IPS but now if you are thinking logically you're going to say well Jose but that's not what I want to actually do and, and you're quite right because this, these are the ones that we pass to that guy but we need to remove that filter and actually add a similar filter to that which is those that are not equal so because those that my that my tipping point IPS cannot filter are the ones that I need to keep on working with so I click on there and I get the you know 1900 uh, to the 1800 uh, my you know th those are the 122 that went uh, uh, on the tipping point uh, so way so now let's see that which of these vulnerabilities are easy to exploit well for that we can add a couple of uh, uh, categories so let's go here and see for example access complexity equals low I mean you don't have to use a zero day or anything special to get those uh, well that, that reduces that number a bit but we can actually add more uh, categories by doing uh, for example access vector equal this is important network this means these vulnerabilities the guy doesn't have to click on anything this can be exploited from the web instead of local and let's say that we're going to add before we do another search another category says that these uh, does not require or equals to none which means these are uh, vulnerabilities that can be exploited without doing any uh, authentication so we add that filter and we can do another search and what do we find well this is more manageable 962 vulnerabilities now uh, we can do something that is even more important this is the scary part that we're gonna edit that uh, search and we're going to add uh, a category here that says uh, they since exploit a 10 and let's say that I'm going to make uh, you know I'm going to go back in time 180 days so if I have not uh, seen those and they add this in here and see if I find anyone that has actually been we know that there have been attempts to exploit that because of the NBAT capabilities of the tool let's see what we get here think I mean there's nothing on this search so we, we we know that at least nobody's exploiting one of those vulnerabilities back to that search and let's say that now we remove these and let's say that we want to see which of these are actually Internet Explorer vulnerabilities so we have a parameter here called quick search here towards the button quick search and it say equals to Internet Explorer and we add that filter make a search and see what comes back we have two vulnerabilities that are Internet Explorer as before we can actually assign those and you know we can go and click on them and see all the metadata that is actually used in the search by this uh, by QVM you know uh, the CVS scores, if there's any X4 score, the impact, uh, you know, the associated traffic, and this is how we see activity related to that particular vulnerability with the flows, you know, virtual patch that are available, all that good stuff. In the same way, we can actually see, well, we, we let's see, those are the uh, Internet Explorer, let's remove those, and let's see which of these are actually uh, let's go into the quick search category and say which of these are Adobe uh, do a quick search equal to Adobe at the filter click search and we see that two are uh, related with Adobe so we can actually you know assign these to the Adobe guide to have those uh, fix we can uh, 
edit the search. We can, for example, remove that one. And notice that uh, in, in the search category, we have, you know, days since vulnerability has been discovered, since has been published. Uh, we have uh, the early warning category that I mentioned to you before. I mean, uh, the, the risk, uh, you know, uh, this is really pretty, pretty impressive. All the all the things that I can actually uh, do the search, but I can also do have rules. And what we have done is that we have modified the engine to allow uh, rules to be actually uh, made and, and say if, if this happened, trigger a scan. Let me show you that. Before showing you the rules, let me show you actually if I go to the risk manager component, we get the topology of the network. This is the network that we are using here. We can actually, you know, uh, look at the either the device and see well this particular device who has a vulnerability. How close it is to my external DMZ? You know, those type of things uh, can be actually seen, and that gives you a different perspective about the priority you'll give to that vulnerability. To the log activity section to show how you can actually uh, uh, create a rule. So here we are seeing logs events. Uh, uh, and we actually go here into rules and go into new rules. We're going to uh, create a new rule event. We're going to be using the wizard. Uh, so it's a rules on events, not on flows or, or offenses. And what we're going to be doing is, let's say just the first one, just as an, an, anyone as an example. So we're going to take when the local network is uh, let's put a name here. The, the rule is going to be test, and let's say that uh, we select the DMZ here of the uh, networks. We submit that. So. Uh, we click next and this is what I want to get you to show you that we now have that capability to say trigger a scan. All this functionality out of the box. Imagine what you can do to cut through the vulnerabilities at your enterprise with this type of tool. Before you were cutting you know, through vulnerabilities with an axe, this is a chainsaw. I don't think you, you will ever go back to the axe after using this.